the so Stephen, what, what is this? We're looking at a whiteboard with a lot of notes. Yeah, um, what I've tried to do here is identify the distinction between groups and networks because a lot of what people are representing as network learning or online learning focuses on groups. But I believe that what online learning brings us looks more like networks. And so I've tried to characterize the major differences between them. And there will be four major elements on each side. In a group, a group will have group unity, there'll be coordination, it'll be closed in some way, there'll be a boundary between members and non-members, and it'll be distributed. Uh, in other words, it'll be centralized, there'll be a leader or a star. In a network, it works differently. A network is based on the principle of diversity. The, the people in a network are, are not coordinated, but rather they're autonomous. Membership in a network, and that I mean not just joining but contributing, is open rather than closed. There are no walls in a network. Uh, the network consists of bridges rather than walls. And then finally, the, the, the nature of information flow in a network is connective, or it's based on the connections between the members rather than some sort of flow of information from an authority to the, to the receivers. So that, that's the overall picture. And the reason why I needed to do this is because when I talk about online learning, I'm talking about network. And I wanted this nice, easy way of drawing the contrast between what I have to say about online learning and, and what various other people have. I hate like point by point lists like this. It's not really the sort of approach that I like to take, but I, I think that despite appearances, this actually really simplifies it for people. Mm. So now what you put is the, the key the key points, like what you just said, sub-points to it. Now what's the red? The, the, the intention of the red is to point to the technology that enables either groups or networks. So if we look up at groups, the dominant technology of groups is, uh, are things like television, radio, newspapers, books, these kind of broadcast media. The, the whole sort of idea where the, the content is static and delivered from a central source to an audience. Whereas, by contrast, the technology of a network the, the, might be talking or, or the telephone or personal email. And, and, you know, these are these are things where it's not a broadcast one to many. It's very often a person to person sort of technology, and so the technologies along each of those characterize or are characterized by these features. The technology that co coordinates, like a, a corporate website or an intranet or a portal, as opposed to the technology that allows people to be individuals, like a personal homepage or a blog. Technology that creates classes like learning management system, learning object metadata, standards, uh, values, as opposed to technology that empowers or liberates, such as a personal learning environment, portfolio, self-directed learning systems. Technology that closes off or creates barriers such as passwords or enterprise systems, copyrights, patents as opposed to technologies that create openness, that bridge things like Creative Commons, GPL, identity, personal identity, um, technology that is central to receivers. Like I've put in podcast and vodcast because these are very centralized technologies, and which is probably why teachers like them so much. Uh, and Technorati, which again focuses on the stars and the gurus, but by counting uh, how many people link to them rather than looking at the structure of the linkage. As compared to technology that is connected, that creates conversations, and podcasts might still work there. Blog might certainly does work, and I can probably draw some other things. I would put social networking in the connected, and I just haven't put it in the diagram yet. Uh, and, 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 yeah. What, where does rich and poor? You put rich and poor close to distributed. Now, so yeah. just what's that? Well, this group identity, this group side of things, uh, creates or results in 
what is sometimes called a power law, an unequal distribution of knowledge, an unequal distribution of wealth uh, in, in the world of the internet, an unequal distribution of links. Uh, and there's been a lot of talk about power laws as being part of the new network and all of that, but power laws are part of the old network. Power laws create a diversity between rich and poor, between the source of all knowledge and the receivers. In a distributed system, we don't get that big spike lag like that. We, we see something a lot more even. We see, like, this is what is called technically a scale-free network. Nothing prevents the rich from getting richer. There are no natural restraints, and if the rich had their way, there would not even be taxes. In the organic world, where we have network structures, there's always something that prevents the rich from getting richer. It's like uh, the nature of a tree trunk. The tree trunk is not a million times thicker than the smallest branch because the nature of trees wouldn't support it. Uh, so the, the divergence, the diversity between rich and poor isn't there. People have more of an equal say, more of an equal access to knowledge, information, power, resources in a network than in a group. What about, um, I can't see reflected in here, the, the tension that we have between the private and the public space, uh, openness or, or closeness, and, and the justification for closed being that we need a, a, a place where we can develop trust with, uh, with people before we can actually communicate effectively. Yeah, um, I mean, a lot, a lot of this is about developing some sort of group identity. Privacy, closeness, this is about creating barriers. Uh, it's about having one sort of self inside a closed space and a different sort of self outside the closed space. Uh, I sometimes have characterized it as like, lying in, in public and telling the truth in private. That's, that's a bit extreme. Although in some cases, I mean, I've, I've seen uh, boards of governors, for example, where the, the member of the board of governors will say one thing in camera and the exact opposite uh, in public. And of course, you know, the privacy constraints prevent other people from, if you will, outing this person. Um, it's, it's the idea that there, there can be exclusivity, that there can be privileged access, ownership over the words, ownership over the images. Uh, as though it's okay for somebody to control the communication. It's okay to have rich and poor. Um, but I don't see it that way. I mean, when, 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 when people talk about privacy, there's two types of privacy. There's one type of privacy is you go off by yourself and you don't communicate it with anyone. You know? and that's, that's a perfectly legitimate sort of privacy. I, I do that every time I go to the bathroom. Right? There's another type of privacy where you do something in public and then try to prevent anybody from acting on it or doing it. It, it. It'd be like if I went to the, well, I won't use that example, but uh, you know, if I did something in public and then tried to say, oh, I didn't mean that, you can't use this word, you can't use this image, now I'm trying to project my power onto you because I did something in public that was really a private behavior.